Hello everyone, my name is Raul and I'm here to show you the autopilot program I have created on Kerbal Space Program using a mod called Kerbal Operating System. All of the codes, the craft, uh, the mod version, and the MATLAB code files that I use to calculate some of the variables uh, are all in the link in the description if you want to have them. Uh, in case you do not know, the Kerbal Space Program is a game where you manage your own space program. Uh, in doing so, you're able to create a variety of rockets and, and planes that you can use to go visit other planets or uh, just fly around for fun. Um, here's a rocket that I created. It has a asparagus staging, uh, which pretty much just uses the outside fuel pods before it goes to the very center one. The code that I wrote for this autopilot is broken down into seven parts. Circularization, phases one through five, and finally re-entry. I'll start with the first part, which consists of the ascent into space and then a burn to enter a circular orbit. In KSP, the most efficient method of leaving an atmosphere is to maintain the airspeed at the terminal velocity of the aircraft. This does not reflect how it actually works in real life, but this holds true for the game's aerodynamic model. I created a controller that governs the throttle of the rocket and it maintains its speed at the terminal velocity. The controller uses dynamic pressure as the error indicator. On mod's display, you can see the values listed are dynamic pressure, which represents what the rocket is currently experiencing, and the Qmax, which represents the dynamic pressure at terminal velocity. Keeping these two values the same ensures that the fuel is being used optimally and is not being lost to either aerodynamic drag or gravity. The rocket's gravity turn was controlled by a simple logarithmic equation that determines the angle to the horizon based on the altitude of the rocket. It begins its turn at 10 kilometers, then ends its 90 degree turn at around 50 kilometers. After this, it continues to burn until the apoapsis reaches 150 kilometers. At this point, the autopilot will warp to the apoapsis and ready the craft for the circularization burn. The tricky part about getting into a circular orbit is that the altitude is constantly changing since gravity is accelerating the craft downward. So to make sure that the craft remains either at the desired altitude or the craft is no longer accelerating, a portion of the thrust has to be used to counteract gravity. However, in practice, I have noticed that this actually causes the craft to accelerate upward. One thing I neglected when I first analyzed this is that the craft's centrifugal force is also in effect since it's traveling at very high speeds. Thus, the difference between the centrifugal acceleration and the gravitational acceleration will produce a net force downward, which is then counteracted by the vector thrust. The net acceleration will reduce as the speed increases until the centrifugal acceleration and the gravitational acceleration are equal. This is when the burn should end and we would be in a circular orbit. I use this principle to create the controller for the circularization burn. The end goal is to maintain the vertical speed as close to zero as possible. The controller guides the pitch of the rocket so the vectored portion of the thrust can cancel out the net downward acceleration. This has consistently produced final eccentricities of 0.0001 to 0.0003, which is very, very close to a perfect circular orbit. After finishing the burn, the next code begins, which is called Phase 1. Here the craft will warp to the lunar injection point and burn to intercept the moon. The mod lacks the coding to determine the phase angles of bodies, so instead I use the distance to a flag that I have already planted on the moon beforehand. I calculated the phase angle and the distance used to determine the burn in MATLAB. The method I used to calculate the phase angles was relatively simple. I first established the parameters of the Hohmann transfer orbit with the final apoapsis at 11.4 million kilometers, which is the radius of the moon's orbit. Then, iterating different phase angles of the moon, I created a graph of what the final periapsis will be once the craft is in the moon's sphere of influence. I chose the final periapsis to be around 50 kilometers. However, since the burn is very lengthy, the real final periapsis is usually around 60 kilometers. Once the craft has entered the moon's sphere of influence, the next program begins called Phase 2. Here, the rocket will perform two burns. The first burn is to reduce its speed and be captured by the moon in an elliptical orbit. Then the autopilot warps until the craft has made one loop and proceeds to perform a circularization burn. Here the same principle is used for the circularization, however instead of the net force being downward, 
net force is upward, and the vector thrust must point down. The next phase of the program is phase 3. Here the craft will begin its descent to the moon. I had trouble determining a method of landing, however I found that the simplest way is to break it down into two phases. The first is to eliminate all the kinetic energy of the craft relative to the moon. Once the craft has finished this burn, the orbit will essentially turn into a straight descent, making the landing much easier. From here I then time warp to around 15 kilometers above the surface where the next part of the descent begins. I establish vertical speed limits to slow down the craft as it approaches the moon's surface. The first is slowing down to vertical speed of 250 meters per second from 10 kilometers to 5 kilometers, then 100 meters per second from 5 kilometers to 2.5 kilometers. I continue this pattern and get to the last speed limit of 2.5 meters per second at 100 meters. At this point I pitch the rocket slightly to slow its horizontal speed as well so that when the rocket touches down it does not fall over. I do not have a control logic to determine where the rocket will land, so currently the rocket will end up wherever it happens to end up. In this attempt, the rocket landed on a very steep hill, which almost tipped over, but thankfully it was successful and the next phase couldn't begin. In phase 4, the rocket then ascends again to a circular parking orbit on the moon. With the moon's gravity being so weak, I can have the rocket pitched 1 degree from the horizon and still gain enough vertical speed to clear the terrain. Not the safest route, but it does make for a very cool view of the ascent. The target apoapsis for this parking orbit is 100 kilometers. Again, the same control logic is used for this circularization burn as in previous burns. However, since the moon's gravity is far less than that of the planet, and the rocket is drained of much of its fuel, some of the proportional gains need to be adjusted so there is not too much overshoot. Phase 5 is the final part of the program before re-entry back to the home planet. I had to calculate a hyperbolic escape trajectory which would put the rocket on a final orbit outside the moon's sphere of influence that had a periapsis inside the planet's atmosphere. This allows for aerobraking, braking, reducing the fuel needed to splash down back onto the surface. I implemented MATLAB again to calculate this trajectory. I iterate various delta v's as well as phase angles of the craft and create a plot of various final periapses of the return orbit. To determine the phase angle of the craft relative to the moon's velocity vector, I use the longitude and latitude of the rocket in orbit. The autopilot then time warps to the correct longitude and fires the rocket to head back home. After phase 5 is done, the last part is to time warp the rocket until it is around 5 kilometers above the surface. The rocket will then stage and deploy the parachute, and it's then a safe journey down to the water. This concludes my presentation. I'll leave you to see the neat re-entry effects as the rocket comes in hypersonic into the atmosphere. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask.